Put the lot of them in the kitchen. Eye. <laughs> in the kitchen. Eye. But that eye is a game. Yeah. And I know how he works. <laughs> and I know he's subtle. And he'll sow one seed. And if you wait three months, then he'll bring you up the ante. And sow another seed. Then he'll up the ante in three more months. And get somebody that you ain't seen in years wear a certain perfume or cologne. And before you know it, you done had a spat for three months with your spouse. Or you had a struggle as a single person in your flesh. And you got around and then all of a sudden that fragrance get in your nose. He ain't subtle. He don't play right. He been watching you. He looks in there and say, how can I get him? And he don't do nothing new. He recycled. Every sin that the devil has is recycled sin. Therefore, if you get that recycling out of your life, he don't have no control over you. The only reason, listen, most of y'all problem is recycle stuff. I'm going to look at some of y'all. Most of y'all problem. Yeah, I am. It's recycled. Am I right, Brian? Most of the stuff is recycled, ain't it? Same old stuff. Yeah. Same old stuff. Ain't nothing new. Sisley? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Exit? Thank y'all for making it easy. Chair? Yeah. Uh, 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 you behind the camera. She just gave it a nod. <laughs> that yeah. is the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Might give you a different color. Yeah. How many of us eat the same stuff all the time? Don't somewhere along the line you say, you know what, baby? I, I'm tired of eating this same stuff. Come on. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Your appetite changed. Yes. Yeah. See, that's what sin does. Young people, it lets you have taste tests. And then all of a sudden you get to the point where it all goes up and it escalates. I know us guy, I wanted to add it because I just didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I was taste testing. Mm -hmm. Then my tolerance built to a certain level. Mm -hmm. I kept going up the ladder. Mm -hmm. I can look at my life and see everything. That's, when I look back, I can see all the plots. Mm -hmm. Hindsight, mm -hmm. but 2020. Mm -hmm. But most of us keep going back to the garbage. Mm. Dig into the garbage. You put it out once, twice, three, four, five times, you still go out there fellowshipping with dead the stuff. And if you keep looking back, you can't go forward. See, when where you're going is more important than where you've been, things change. So that's what vision does for you. Yeah, it's something that, yeah, it's something in my mind that I want to do something other than what I've always done. I'm sorry. I ain't gonna be mean all my life. You know, I, I learned, look, I, trust me. I just through my own life. I kicked and screamed when we got a little king to the house. Before he came in, I kicked and screamed. No, I'm not, no. I, everybody out, no. We're gonna do what we have to do. I like the nice, quiet, laid back, close my eyes when I want to, leave when I want to, come back. I, ain't got, I can't come back when I want to because I gotta come back. <laughs> but for the most part, right? I can't stay out like I was when I was single. But you know what I'm saying? Because I'm here. But I'm just saying, put a little pressure on my quarters. I ain't talking about the ones in my pocket. But then God got my heart, prophet, inboxed me, and told me. And then God, I came down to pray, and God told me, said, You've been praying for babies. Come on. I was like, I wasn't expecting them to come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I've been praying for 20s to 30s to have young children so we can have a children's ministry yeah. so that the generations go from generations. I never knew it was coming to my house. Mm -hmm. So God answered my prayer through my lips. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't come the way I thought it was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I ain't, I ain't got nowhere else to go. Let me, yeah, let me finish this part. This is, I don't know where we are right now, but we, we are, we, 
just we're good people. Let me make a statement so I can make sure I figure, you know, have a launching pad, a point of reference for next time we get here. It is possible to teach words that have no real influence in our own hearts because these words have no way to inspire, reason, and act within our mind. They are just laid on the surface at the mercy of all spiritual activity. So everything I've been saying, all the instructions, the teaching I've been saying, can still have no influence on us. It can just lay on the surface of our hearts, unchallenged. Uh, the, our heart still is as, as fallow ground, mm -hmm. parched. Mm -hmm. And then, therefore, we just live, we, we are, it, those things are laid on the surface, and, and we are forever at the mercy of our own environments. So we can have all these things, we can be inspired, and yet not live out of authentic Christianity. Not pressing forward to the things that God has called us to. That's why we must hear the call, experience the touch, and pursue the path that's before us. Remember we talked about our, our future is prophetic and I spent time, I dissected those three. And we need to understand that we got to stay away from FOBO. How many know we got FOBO people? You ever heard of FOBO? We're going to put it up on the screen. FOBO. F-O-B-O. FOBO people, they're going to bring it up. There you go. FOBO. Fear of better of options. So most of us are stuck. We're mesmerized with the expectation that God has because we have a fear that God's expectation is greater than ours. It's a technical term. I forgot the name of it. I know it in my head. But it means the fear of change. It is a clinical term. It's a phobia yes. that you can have a fear of change. Mm -hmm. That you can just, just the expectation that the Father has. If people told me, I know what God calling me to do, but I don't know if I can do it. If he's calling you to him, you can do it. Not like water boy. You can do it. And most of the time, God is trying to raise you out of levels of complacency when he starts speaking to you and telling you, get out of the boat, walk out on the water, do something different. That's what Friday Night Lights is for. You know I'm going to plug it in. That's what it's for. It's so that you can get out of the boat. <laughs> so we can know what's on the inside of you. So that the anointing can put you in a uncompromising position so that he can flow from your life. He will take you up out of your personality. Here, trust me, I ain't, I, look, it took me a long time to be wanting to teach and preach and stand up for people. I ain't, you know, it took me about 10 years of my 20 years to get used to that. I did it because it was my assignment. I don't mind it now. Amen, because I know who God called me to be, but I'm just telling you, I know some people don't mind having a mic. And some of us that, you know, that dealt with some levels of insecurity and stuff, we, we don't want mics. That's why we have it down here when we're giving testimonies. Come on. I don't need a mark. <laughs> you ever heard them? No, don't stop it. <laughs> Once you ready, stop it. <laughs> yeah, but we, we, need to, we need to move forward. We can't just be here waiting for our number to be called. Because we're in casting call. That's what they wait for. When is my turn? Come on now. Everybody hears the same message. But ultimately, even though many are called, few are chosen. Which side of the pendulum will you settle for? Hopefully when I get done with this message next week, because I will be done next week, we'll settle that in our heart. There won't be any reservations. Because we ain't supposed to have reservations by now. Actually, according to the scriptures, if we're going to be contextually true, guess what? True legitimate growth in the kingdom takes three years. You should know your anointing, your call, your grace, all of that in three years. Well, I've been here ten. Okay, well then, you got, you got a lot of time on your hands. Now you have to get and find out where the loose ends are. If you've been here over three years, five years, 
How, you know, yeah. It's not to make you feel bad. Some of it may have been upon me. I, I, I'll carry that load. But in the last seven, eight years, no. Nah. You've been here probably, you know, in the early part of 2000. Yeah, you got it. You got an excuse. But in the last 10 years or so, it's been real definitive. God has been speaking to all of us mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. He's not mute, so that means we must be tone deaf. But he's amplifying his, his, his word. Anybody can feel like that the Holy Spirit is amplifying. I, I don't know about Thank you for being honest. Mm -hmm. But he is putting pressure. It ain't the devil. It's destiny. Amen. Yeah. Maybe you need to pray for a dream. Say, God, show me a dream. Well, no, no, y'all don't need no more. No. <laughs> well, Lord Jesus, I got folks that had dreams after dreams after dreams. God told me so and so and so. And they still doing what they're doing. So a dream won't change you. We had a whole generation that had manifestations of that sort coming out of Egypt. You see what happened to them. They had all the signs and wonders and still didn't get it. So a sign and a wonder ain't going to make you change. I think you're going to have to submit to what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's your cue card. <laughs> Submit to the word that I've heard. Even as Hebrews 4 and 2 said, the gospel being preached to them didn't profit them because it wasn't mixed with faith. The same gospel of the kingdom is being preached to us. It won't prosper you until it's mixed with faith. And faith without works will never come alive. Works and faith together will bring you to a level of understanding that will blow your mind. Amen. Father, we bless you for this. In Jesus' name, we just ask that you will continue to do what you are here for.